Well, hello there, my Sagittarian Collective Sun Moon Rising signs. Welcome to your What Do I Need read for this new moon in Scorpio uh, in October 2019 to full moon in Taurus, which is in November 2019. Next month, you probably know that already if you're watching this kind of stuff. So welcome. I am uh, your reader for the moment, Mark Angela Lyons, Mal for short. My friends call me Mal. Feel free to. To my subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing and following along, driving my numbers up bit by bit, heading for that super live chat. <laughs> A thousand subscribers to do it. I'm so down to do it. So help me get there, my newbies, my new people if you're new to my channel. Uh, a quickie read is just that. Uh, under 20 minutes for me is a quickie. Uh, I'm a soul number three communicator, so I can talk. I have been my whole life. My career is so third chakra, right? So we're going to pick five cards, one from five different decks, just to get an overview of what you need. Now, a what do I need read is a little bit different. Uh, it's really asking the divine directly, well, what do I need, right? Uh, it's not about where am I on my path or what's going on with my finances or, you know, my love life, twin flame, soulmate, true love, who knows, right? Although that can certainly be indicated. There are cards that indicate all of those things in these five decks. Uh, but this is more going directly to the divine using a divination system, right? Because you can ask, what do I need? And signs and symbols will pop up everywhere. You're Sagittarius, right? Ninth house. You're giving guidance left, right, and center, my archers, right? So, uh, you know, that, that Jupiterian expansion, sun, moon, rising, you can ask and, and you can pretty quickly receive usually, uh, depending on how, you know, relaxed you are and in the flow. This is uh, using just a divination system, right? So uh, please keep in mind this is a collective read. If it doesn't click, it's just not your reading. That's why I do sun, moon, and rising. Pretty, I'm really for all of the signs. Uh, whenever I do a zodiacal set, you know, it's always sun, moon, rising. If it's a relationship thing, I'll throw in Venus from Mercury retrogrades. I'm going to do those next. Uh, I'll, I'll throw Mercury in there. So, you know, be kind. <laughs> be kind. If it's not your reading, that's okay. Just go check your other signs, right? Or you can go cross-watch. I'm totally down with what? You think I don't cross-watch? Of course I cross-watch. <laughs> I am shame. No shame in my game. I like getting the info of Virgo. <laughs> All right. So we got all our basics done here. Let's dive in. Take a nice deep breath. Draw down your, your higher power. Ask it to watch it with you and explain it to you, to guide you through it, as I have done with my collective pantheons in the blessings of the deck. If you're new to the channel, I bless the decks before I hit record. And really, when I sent out the final blessing, which I'll do at the end again of this video, who did the energy come through me and write to you all? It felt really cool. So here we go. My collective pantheons of angels, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved. Please, one card in clarity for the Sagittarius Collective Sun Moon rising sign for this new moon to full moon next. What is the archetype card? What is the archetype that they need? to look at, to focus on the soul power that they need to alchemize from shadow to light, from lead to gold for the well-being of all. What do they need for this new moon to full moon next in terms of an archetype? Oh, youch, the martyr. Now look, the, everybody, no, don't click off just yet. I know people are like, oh, I don't like it. That's not for me. But look, the martyr is a divine family archetype. The thing about archetypes is they are neutral. Now, again, I'm going to try and fix my lighting a little bit better. You know, it's also daylight. It's probably sunlight literally shining on the cards. It's, it's got a definition for the light and the shadow, or if you like, the lead and the gold. So, like, the darker the lead is, and we all know martyrs. I mean, we've all martyred at one point or another. It's different if you've got, you know, the archetype lifelong. This can be something that you need to look at, perhaps, maybe within yourself. If you know how you're dealing with a martyr, it's always a, a flip-flop thing that can go on in divination. But as horrible and toxic as the shadow is, is as brilliant and bright as the light is. Um, I, I mean, so many of the great masters were either martyred or martyrs, right? So I'm going to read that once I get all five cards down to put that in context, right? 
Because, you know, people are like, oh, I got the lover's card. That's so great. But the shadow side of the lover is like obsessive, jealous, crazy fucking stalker energy. So, you know, we all have, they're all, all of the archetypes are in the collective unconscious. So even if it's not something in your usual repertoire, doesn't mean we don't have access to it, right? Absolutely. Like when I look at the archetype of the engineer, I'm like, meh, right? There's no animation of repulsion or attraction. If there's repulsion or attraction, it usually means it's in your energetic field, right? Uh, but for that one, I'm like, meh, but that doesn't mean I can't figure shit out, right? I can absolute and absolutely engineer a solution for myself. You should see what I get away with here in my home. <laughs> Elysia, as I call my home in Holbert. It's essentially the spa section of the underworld. I'm a witch. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, let's ask the angels now. My angels, there you are. Please, uh, one card of clarity for the Sagittarian Collective, sun, moon, rising sign. What do they need for this new moon to full moon next, considering the collective pantheons have said they need to address to deal with alchemize the martyr archetype. And as we said, either within themselves or dealing with somebody else, right? So my angels, what say you? What do they need? Well, now we know it's romantic. All right, so there you go. You need the romance. You need to look at this some way in romance, in a romantic context. See why these are quickies? It's like I'm going to explain them. That's one word to explain the martyr. A lot more on that card, right? So that's what we're going to ask the gods. My gods, Zeus in particular, who sits solo on the throne of Sagittarius. Talk about a, an archer. <laughs> Lightning bolts. Bolts of truth. You get me, Sag, right? Speak the truth <laughs> and blow shit up. So, my gods, please, one card of clarity for this Sagittarian collective. Sun, moon, rising sign. What do they need for this new moon to full moon next? Considering the collective pantheon says the martyr and the angels say romance, what say you, my gods? What do they need? Well, we're looking at the five of flames there, Pele the volcano, right? So an explosion of fire. Now that can be sexual energy, like particularly repressed. This is definitely something that's repressed. I mean, lava just doesn't, you know, all of a sudden one day it's like, oh yeah, hi. No, it builds up, right? Like over centuries and then ba fucking boom. But that can also be creative energy, certainly. But with romance and the martyr there, I'm going to kind of go more like towards the passion angle of that. And I'm not trying to go too intuitively deep. Like really when I lay them all down, I'm giving you the, uh, let's see, that would be the left brain interpretation, right? The the masculine, the the intellectual. But then when I put it all together, that's that's when it all goes in intuitive. And then the left brain, right brain, hemisync, all of that goes down. It's what makes me a good reader. I'm a Virgo sun with a Pisces moon. I got the masculine and feminine balance of built in, born on a full moon, right? Leo rising. <laughs> Meow. With this like fucking weird stray. Yeah, I guess that's my four lock now. At this point, it's more like a five lock. <sighs> my masters, the ascended masters, those who graduated the earth school curriculum and are helping from the higher dimensions. Yeah, I wasn't too thrilled about them either until I started meeting them. They're great. And they've got the best sense of humor of all of my pantheons. They get it. They're like, yeah, Bill suck. We know. <laughs> yeah, codependency's a pain in the ass. I'm right there with you. Uh, at least that's how they are with me. Anyway. So uh, my masters. <laughs> See, it said it's Sagittarius. It's a jovial Jove, Jupiter, Zeus energy. I love it so much. Please, one card in clarity. Oh, it feels so good to empath the Sagas. Maybe I'll just do Sagittarians. I have no planets in Sagittarius. All right, get on with it. My masters, please, one card in clarity for this Sagittarian collective sun, moon, rising sign. For this new moon to full moon next, what do they need? Considering that the collective pantheons are saying to look at the martyr archetype, the angels romance, the gods, the Five of Flames, the Five of Wands, Pele, the Volcano, an explosion of passion under repression. Please, what say you? What do they need this new moon to full moon next? Grace, best card you could get in that situation is grace. Here, I want you to really see it. Can you see it says the word? No, you can't. Wow, that is really bright. All right, I'm going to have to screw with camera filters. You do what you gotta do. You do what you can. You do what you gotta do. But I love you, Suzanne. Uh, 
It's a Lou Reed song. Sorry if your name is Suzanne. That wasn't a Me Too moment. It was an 80s lyric. Uh, with that card of grace, if you're going to go through all of this, do it with grace. And that's really going to influence that martyr card because it is such a delicious, divine family archetype uh, that to uh, really get the higher, uh, the higher gold of the martyr is a magnificent, magnificent thing. So let's finish up uh, with our fifth card here from uh, the Whispers of Love Oracle. I love this so much. And this is the voices of the higher selves of all involved, meaning your higher self, uh, to my extent, my higher self, even though I'm not a, a, well, everything I do is with my higher self. It's who I am. It's the soul that incarnated <laughs> to be Mark A. Lyons. We're not really two. It's just sometimes we play the role so well we forget we're acting, right? Ain't it just the truth? The illusion of separation exploding like this volcano into fifth dimensional unity consciousness. Higher selves of all involved, please. There you are. One card in clarity for the Sagittarian Collective. Sun, moon, rising sign for this new moon to full moon next. Considering that the collective pantheon say the martyr, the angels, romance, the gods, Pele, the volcano, and the master's grace. What say you, higher selves of all involved? What do they need? Love is all around you. Really good with that grace card. Love is all around you. There's more written on that card, and I will certainly get to it. But for now, love is all around. No need to waste it. You can take the town. Why don't you take it? You're going to make it after all. So let's read this martyr for you, all right? Because I know, like, if I if I didn't know this and I, and I was watching the video and so it said, and you are the martyr, I'd be like, fuck you, click. <laughs> right? No. Uh, but this really is such a high vibrational uh, thing. So again, light and shadow, uh, lead and gold. Let's look at the light. Light attribute learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause the transcendent nature right that's why they're flying that's why they are in the clouds right that's why they're woo, soaring the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause. So service to yourself, taking care of yourself, perhaps having to walk away from things that do not serve and into things that do, right? My hunters, right? My archers. So that thing of service, that, that martyrdom to a service where you take on perhaps the suffering of others so they don't have to suffer, or you go into where there is suffering and give your gift of what? Levity, joy, pleasure, and in this case, possibly sexuality and romance. Well, definitely sexuality and romance because that's, that's what's there. Now, that can also mean that you're dealing with a martyr. So let's read the shadow side. Or if, look, we all do this every now and again. So, you know, don't get too twisted. Shadow attribute, addiction to self-pity right? Now, look, everybody self-pities, but addiction to self-pity, I mean, there's so much biochemical stuff that goes on with emotion. Every time you have an emotion, hypothalamus puts together all these chemicals and amino acids and shoots it into every cell in your body. So, you know, addiction to any emotion is possible. Although I have to say, being addicted to the love of the gods, right? The love of God is now an verb, like that emotion seems to only be drawing me closer and closer and closer to the divine. And that's a very Sagittarius thing, right? Very mystical too. So, you know, keep an eye uh, if there is self-pity going on here, because with this romance card, there is something so warm and something so hot and something so, oh, I'm getting the word mergy, like like not just energy, not just emergence, but mergy. Like it's like the energy is just merging and blending. And there is something that feels explosive here that feels like, you know, is this an orgasm card? This is definitely a blasting open of hidden passion, right? At least. But that feels like an orgasm, I'm going to say from the depths of your soul. One of them, they're tantric, universal, every particle in all dimensions going, yes, wish, right? 
blessed, blessed be, and all under grace, right? So make grace part of your vocabulary. That's what you need. So, all right. Now, I wrote a book called Words of Grace. It's essentially a book of prayer. You can jump in wherever you want, but it's an ebook. Go to my website. The link is down below for the book as well as Spell Ingredients, the first ebook I did. I wanted to see if I could make an ebook, and I did. I took one of my, my witch classes and turned it into an ebook. Uh, but words of grace really is saying, okay, well, you know, I don't know what this is, the grace of humility, which the grace of humility is really a wonderful thing to have in place every day. It's to know that you don't know. Grant me the grace of humility. Great maiden goddess, the maiden grace. Grant me the grace of humility to know that I do not know, but I'm willing to be shown, right? Show me what I need. I'll do my best, right? Humility. Humility is the shield against humiliation because, you know, if you did your best, you can't really be humiliated. You'd say, no, I prayed. I did my best, right? So with grace, like really make grace. Like even if it means saying grace at every meal, right? Every cigarette, every whatever. Uh, but there's something very graceful that there is a divine sexual connection here. You know, not every divine connection is soulmate or a twin flame in a romantic relationship sense. That's why I do the twin flame and, and soulmate readings. Uh, but to get that, that there's absolutely what I would call tantric partners, that true love tantric partners, that it may not be a, a relationship forever and ever and ever. In other words, quickies can be sacred too. One night stands or otherwise. Remember, I am pagan. I dissolved that Judeo-Christian sexual guilt out of my system long time ago, being gay and coming out uh, junior year of high school in the 80s, taking my life into my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this a really long time because uh, then particularly love is all around you there is love everywhere all the time simply acknowledge this is truth so acknowledge that you know love is who we are and that this universe everything that happens is here to help us to serve us to make us grow so we don't have to like it all though oh no 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 being stuck in traffic, you don't have to sit there and like it. You go, okay, this is helping me somehow, whatever, right? And just being aware of it, you'll feel your energy shift a little bit. So to kind of adapt that into, okay, so then love is all around me. I may not see it because maybe I am kind of like burnt out and taking on other people's stuff and not even realizing that I am martyring myself, but I can shift into that place of service, right? Service to myself. Let me service myself here. But with this romance here, there is no question that there is another person involved here that, uh, you know, maybe there's some martyrdom going on there too. That's I'm feeling that in like maybe two, three percent of the collective. So that's not a huge dominant uh, vibe going on here. Um, but to really flow in with that romance because it is passionate. Now, look, people don't like the fives in the tarot because they're like, oh, five. It's a card of change. Hence the pentacle, right? It's like fire, earth, air, water, spirit. It's about a, a, a completion in the four that then poof, changes to move on to the six of balance. So they are temporary. They are transitory. This is not the tower, all right? This is an explosion. This might be a, a one-time thingy to look out for. If not, it's a. It feels like a brand new sexual experience. Why? Because there is grace. What is grace? Here, I'll put that there. What is grace? Grace is a divine substance. It is the breath of the gods. It is the breath of the divine. So this feels. I, I gotta say, it feels tantric. And you know, I, I, I was gonna do another one. I did um, uh, quickie sex reads. Uh, last month for September, and I enjoyed them, but the numbers weren't high, and, and you know, I, I don't necessarily have the best divination uh, sets for that kind of stuff, but I know quite a lot about sacred spirituality, Eastern and Western, you know, from Western sex magic and occultism to, you know, Eastern Tantra, balance and chakras and whatnot, right? So, you know, this feel, there just feels like a touch of that, and look, it, if it was just these two cards, I was like, have fun with your lover, right? But then when you bring in the martyr, such a high vibrational archetype, and that's something if you're ever gonna study archetypal dynamics, first of all, go read Caroline Mace, everything she's ever written on the subject, she's a genius. She's my favorite spiritual teacher. Well, her and Matt Kahn, they're divine masculine, divine feminine, <laughs> maybe flip sides, I don't know. Uh, but to get the power, the voltage of that is just so, damn strong with grace and love is all around you this feels like a mystical sexual romantic experience so i hope for you it is cool cool please do like and subscribe uh wishing you the very best and the very blessed and because i've done this 
for every sign that I have done so far in this series. I will do it for you too. Take a breath, sweethearts. <sighs> May the Sagittarian collective sun, moon, rising signs be blessed with all that they need from this new moon to full moon next, that they can alchemize this martyr archetype with romance and this volcano explosion of passion with grace and discovering that love is all around us, that love is all around them. To let it in, to play, to explore, and to transform for the well-being of all. And so it is. So mode it be. Thank you so much for watching my Sagis. I love my Sagittarians in my life. They're great fun. Uh, so wishing you again the very best and the very blessed. Please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell too. Apparently all this stuff drives up the algorithm. I don't know what an algorithm is. Uh, my millennial tries to explain it, explain it to me, but it doesn't make sense. Whatever. Um, so enjoy, laugh, have fun. And uh, for now, <laughs> hail. <laughs> Farewell, happy tantric experience, and blessed, blessed, blessed be.